So today we are going to be talking about our websites and our online fundraising. So I'll start with websites, how to get them up and running, what we can and can't do. Um, and there are definitely more rules this year than there have been in the past. Um, I'll show you where to find everything online. And then we'll go into the online fundraising and its functionality and ways it can be used. So first up, if you don't already have your website up and running for your event, please do that as soon as possible. And to get that running, you're going to go on to SharePoint, go to Workspaces. Under Interdepartment Folders, go to Development. And then you can either use the left-hand navigation to go to Greater Giving, or you can click on the Systems button. Totally up to you on which one you prefer. And then if you look in the folders, there is one called Websites. And there's three different website request forms. There's GoRed, Heartball, and then Other Social Event. The Other Social Event would be things like a Golf Tournament, STEM, Hard Hats, those type of events, you would use that form. So you're going to download this form. Please don't fill it out on SharePoint. Um, everybody has to use the same form, so if somebody's already filled it out, then the next person has to go in and delete everything and then refill it. So download it, fill it out, and then email it over. And you'll see at the bottom of every request form, there is a special inbox for these, um, for any website requests. So um, don't send them to my personal inbox. Um, you want to send them to the fda.se.website at heart.org. And I will put that in the chat box as well. So it's now in the chat box on Skype. And then when you, when you download this, you'll be able to see the footer as well. So fill this out as much as possible. Um, Heartballs, in order to build your project, I had to have your templates already chosen. So that was done last year. You don't even need to bother checking off one of those um, because they've already been chosen. And once they're chosen, they can't be changed without deleting your entire um, event year. And we don't want to do that because then you have to re-enter everything. So just know in the past, Heartball was really flexible as far as what I could um, customize for you. I could change backgrounds, I could do pictures all over the place, I could pretty much do whatever you asked for. Uh, this year, National has really cracked down. Um, I am not allowed to change the home pages at all. So the Actually, I shouldn't say that. There is very little I'm allowed to change on the home pages. The only thing I'm allowed to do is update the event information, so the location, the times, the date, that info. And I can change the picture at the bottom next to our mission. But I can only change it to an AHA stock photo. So if you want a different photo, I can do that. It just has to be one of the stock photos. Um, the rest of it has to stay as is. You do not need to fill out every single part of the form in order to get your website started. You can just send me what you have so far and I can at least start building. Um, I can always hide pages if you're not ready for them to show yet. If you don't have your ELT formed yet, I can hide the leadership page. Um, we just want to get those websites up and out as, as soon as possible. So any questions about getting those websites started? All right. And if you don't already have an event date, which there are very few events that don't yet, um, but there are still kind of a couple hanging out there, um, as soon as you schedule those events, please make sure that you're updating your settings in Greater Giving and letting me know um, so that we can get uh, everything updated that needs to be. Once your website is built, 
and you have an update, say you want to add someone to your ELT, um, you have another Circle of Red member, you've added a sponsor, need their logo up, anything like that, you don't need to send the form again. You can just send an email to that fda.sc.website. Um, just send a quick email that says, hey, can, can you add this silver sponsor logo to our list? Or um, so-and-so has joined our ELT, could you please add them to our ELT? If you are in a market that has multiple events, like New Hampshire has two different Go Reds and a Heartball, please specify what event you're talking about. Um, I have actually had it happen in the past where I've updated the wrong site because um, we got confused on which event was which. Um, so if anybody's here from New Jer Northern New Jersey, um, don't just say Northern New Jersey. Tell me whether it's the hard ball or the goat red. That was the one I messed up last year. So uh, lastly, and I don't think there's any out there for me to show you right now, um, is when we use our websites, if somebody makes a purchase through the website, whether it's um, tickets or makes a donation or does um, a donation towards the, the online fundraising, nope, this is where I usually have the most um, coming in fastest. What will happen when you have a purchase is under project website or under the join me section, you'll see where it says zero waiting. This will kind of, the text will change color to kind of a, a bright aqua kind of color, and it will say one waiting, two waiting, however many. When you see that, you need to import them. So you just click on import online registrations and purchases. I don't have any to show you right now. Um, you're going to have to match the person up to a supporter that's already in the database or create a new person if they don't already exist. If um, you do get something to import and you want me to walk you through your first couple, I'm happy to jump on Skype with you um, and go through those with you to make sure that they're importing correctly. The, the Join Me ones are super easy. All you have to do when a contribution comes in is you click on the import. It will have a whole list of donations that come in and you just click a button that says important. They all come in at once. You don't need to do the matchup like you do with um, the actual website donations and um, registrations. So any questions about that so far? And one thing to note on any purchases that come in through the website, importing them does not charge the card. The card was charged as soon as that person hit, its, hit submit on the website. So not importing them does not keep that card from being charged. So if somebody made a mistake on the website and they contact you and say, I didn't mean to donate $5,000, it was supposed to be $500, um, just not importing it is not going to keep that card from being charged $5,000. That has already happened. You have to import it in order for me to process the refund. So that's that's a common question that I get is, um, can I just delete it or skip it and not charge the card? They've already been charged. Um, any questions about websites? Okay, we're going to move on to Join Me, which is our online fundraising. For those of you who have any experience with HeartWalk, it's very similar to that. Um, our websites have the capability for participants to get uh, a template. They can, they can join online, set up an account. They're given a template that they can personalize with a photo or a video. It's one or the other. They can't do both. So photo or video and their story, they're given some email templates that they can customize and send out to family and friends. They can share their personal website on social media. Any donations that come in through those sites, um, all of that money goes towards your Open Your Heart goal. So 
very easy way to build up those open your heart numbers before you get to your event. Um, we've had events use join me for all kinds of different things. The, there's some events that do a survivor group where every survivor has their own page. Um, some of them use it for ELT challenges and the ELT members compete against each other um, to see who can get the most money in. We've had some use it for little vendor campaigns. Um, I think we had uh, last year in Long Island, we had um, the event honoree was actually a company and the people within the company all did uh, fundraising pages as part of being honored. So there's all kinds of different things you can use it for. It has the functionality to do individual fundraising and team fundraising. But you have to let me know if you want both of them. Um, the default when I set it up is just individuals. If you want teams, I need to know that from the very beginning because for every team that you set up, I have to create a new fundraising um, kind of outline for them. So if you want all of these people to be able to join under a company or you want multiple different kinds of fundraisers, you want to do honoree fundraising, ELT fundraising, and memorial fundraising, I need to set up three different fundraiser accounts. So as people join um, and create those accounts, you're going to see Join Me fundraising activities come in. You'll see the one waiting. Uh, you can see how many people have joined over on the left where it says active fundraisers. So this particular event has 30, 38 people doing online fundraising. To look at who is online doing fundraising, you can click on the Manage Join Me Activities, and that will show you everybody who is doing the online fundraising. It will show you their goals that they've set for themselves, how much they've actually brought in. You can click on their URL, and that will bring you to their personal fundraising page. Um, so you can see, you know, what their story and their picture is. Um, you can see any comments that come in from donors. And then you can also, if someone, you saw the comments, if somebody says, I didn't want a comment to show, or I don't want my name to show, or I don't want my amount to show, if you click on View Donations, you can actually fix that for them. So in the past, we weren't able to change it once it was there. Thank God, Greater Giving finally gave us access to do that. So if Mallory says, I didn't want my name on it, I just wanted my comment, you can come in here, click on Edit, and just uncheck the donor name and save it, and it takes her name off of that comment field. The other thing is um, there is one confusing part in um, creating the fundraising pages. Once you create an account and you create your page, the next time you log in, it asks if you want to create a new page and you can say yes or cancel. And we're trying to get that cancel button changed so that it says yes or return to my previous page. Um, we don't want them clicking yes if they already created a page. So please let people know that. Once they've created the page, they just click cancel and it will take them back to that page. And you'll see that um, it's happened. Let me see. Like Danielle Cohen here created two pages. And what I did was I went in and clicked to see which one she actually customized. And then I turned off the one that she didn't customize. And to do that, you just check off the person, go to set status, and you can turn off their page. It takes that access away from them so they can't do anything with that page anymore. And that page doesn't show on the website as a blank page. So to look at our website, you can go under Project Website to view Project Website. 
You can do this at any time. It will show you what your current website looks like um, at any given minute. Um, so that will give you the ability to take a look at things, keep up with it, you know, send me those, those updates as soon as you have them to keep your page um, current and up to the minute. So um, in their header, I have their fundraising directory. If I click on that, that will show me all of those people that are doing online fundraising. And it shows me their goal and their income. And if I click on their name, it also jumps to their personal fundraising page. So anybody visiting our website could go to that fundraising directory, whoops, wrong page, um, could go to that fundraising directory and look up a friend if they know somebody's online fundraising or when they share it on social media, they can go through that link. And I can also share someone else's page on social media. So if Ira was a friend of mine and I wanted to promote his page, I could just click on share in the Facebook icon and it would share it out on my Facebook page and I could add the little blurb, hey my friend Ira is raising money for the American Heart Association Young Professionals in New York City, please support him and his goal. And it would include the link to his page and people can come back here and donate or buy tickets. That's another option is I can add a link to buy tickets to your event to all of the personal fundraising pages and anybody who buys tickets through their page that dollar amount um, gets added to their um, their donation or fundraising progress. If somebody wants to join online fundraising, um, I put a button over on the side and I can either do it as a button on the side, I can do it as a drop down menu under the directory or I can do both. Um, totally up to you. So if I want to join their online fundraising, I can click on that button. It brings me to the click here to join. And this is where I go to create an account. I already have one. Um, so I could log in now and it walks me through everything I need to do to create that account or to get back into mine. Um, when you create an account and just know, please, know that we should not be creating accounts for people, they should be signing themselves up. Um, because what happens is you put in the email address, confirm you're not a robot, and when you hit confirm, it sends an email to that email address. Just like when all of you guys got your um, login information for Greater Giving, it sends you your username and a link to create your password. So that's what's gonna happen. If you try to create someone else's account using your own email, it's gonna come through as you. Um, and it ends up being an absolute nightmare to try to fix that. Um, we had that happen a, a few times a few years ago um, where we had somebody try to create a whole bunch of different fundraiser accounts using their own email. And every time they changed the name on one account, it changed the name on all of the accounts that are attached to that email. Um, so you don't want to do that. Okay. Also back here in the Greater Giving folder is a Join Me in Online Fundraising. If you click on that, there's a PDF document that walks you through how to create an online fundraising account, how to personalize the page, um, how to share it out, how to send your emails, all of that information. So this can be downloaded and shared with your fundraisers. Um, so p feel free to steal that at any point. The one up there is for both personal and team fundraising. I have one that's just for personal fundraising. If you don't want to confuse people and you're not using Teams, um, just let me know and I can send you the condensed version that's just personal with the team part taken out. So any questions about online fundraising?
So like I said, any income that comes in through these pages goes to Open Your Heart. I know some of you guys have humongous Open Your Heart goals this year, so great way to, um, to get that income in before the event. There's a few of you on the call that have had events that have had fantastic success with online fundraising pages. Katie, you're new, um, but a couple years ago, you had an online fundraiser that actually did a page for his own birthday. He wanted to do um, gifts, online gifts in, in lieu of actual birthday gifts for himself. So he asked people, he, he had a big, I think it was the 60th, it was either 50th or 60th, it was one of those mile marker birthdays. Um, he had a party and he had his computer there and asked people in lieu of gifts, please just donate to the American Heart Association. And he ended up getting a $10,000 gift um, for his birthday. So that was, that was a nice surprise. So if the fact that I'm recording is keeping anyone from asking questions, I am now turning the recording off.